Hello everyone, welcome to the Green Man channel, hope you're all good and well. So in honouring his latest release, The Elephants of Mars, I couldn't resist doing a top 10 tracks of the guitar wizard Joe Satriani. Um, and you know, these actually condensing these down to 10 was really, really difficult. I've thoroughly enjoyed going back through his catalogue and discovering some little gems here and there that I'd completely forgotten about. Sometimes they're the really short tracks as well that I really like where he does some, you know, really beautiful understated melodic guitar work. Um, and as honestly, this was a really tough task and I've had to do a few honorable mentions because I just didn't want to not mention a few of these tracks, which, you know, I've loved over the years. And, you know, there's some more recent stuff here, but, you know, as you get towards the top, I have to admit, it, it does kind of delve more into, you know, the older albums. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff here. If you're not, if you're not familiar with Joe Satriani, um even if you're maybe a metalhead he does some good heavier tracks as well i just think there's a lot of variety on offer in his albums and um you know it's, it's some really good stuff and he is worth checking out i think and even maybe if you are a fan of satch maybe there's a few tracks here you'd forgotten about as well or that you didn't know about so do check these out as and when you get a chance because they're really good satriani tracks obviously in my opinion as always uh, so we're going to start with the honourable mentions. First up is Unstoppable Momentum from the 2013. So of course, Unstoppable Momentum is the title track. And it just has a really good progression to this one. But I really like when that progression kind of stops and Satch does that really good guitar solo, which is actually kind of one of his more straightforward sounding guitar solos. Uh, but it's really fantastic, this track. It's just very uplifting and is what it says. I mean, it is unstoppable in a way. It's just a really good track from an album, which I suppose lots of people could give, would probably give a miss, but I really like that song in particular from Unstoppable Momentum. Next up, as another honorable mention, we have Dream Song uh, from Black Swans and Wormhole Wizards uh, from 2010. And Dream Song is just a great track from that particular album, I think. Um, again with i think a really good selection of solos in this track um and you know a pretty kind of cool cool beat in the background as well of dream song so another one to check out doors of perception comes in as my third honorable mention from his most recent release the elephants of mars and doors of perception i think almost demonstrates from this latest album what is so good about it in kind of a nutshell in a three minute nutshell it's just kind of weird but has one or two really great moments towards the end of the track as well in particular. So that's my third honorable mention. Next, we have Revelation from 2008's kind of old album, Professor Satchifunculus and the Mysterium of Rock. And I have to think about, you know, that title. Um, but Revelation is a bit like Unstable Momentum in a way. It's got that sort of same sort of style. It's really uplifting. It's a slightly unusual sort of, sounds slightly offbeat in a way, but it's a really great track. And then really, again, another uplifting style Satriani track coming in here as another honourable mention. As the last of my honourable mentions is, and I can't believe this hasn't made my top 10, but I didn't kind of want too many of the same style of track in my top 10. So that's partly the reason it's not in the top 10. This is Until We Say Goodbye from Engines of Creation. And this is a fantastic, slower, understated Satriani track um, with these wonderful kind of ascending and descending kind of um ambient electronics i think in that track uh with another really understated melodic guitar solo over the top which is you know very slow but absolutely just perfect um for what's going on in the background in that track so that's until we say goodbye um as my last one will mention so let's get on with the top 10 now without any further chit chat so number 10 is from is there love in space 2004 and this is the souls of distortion a, a heavier track so one for you metal heads out there this is a heavy track um but with a really cool you know there's really cool lead overlays um with a bit of wah wah sound going on but it's just a really cool track and one i thought almost immediately of when i was thinking in my top 10 tracks and it comes in at just at number 10. um number nine is a little now this is a gem it's a hidden gem not many people probably mention this track and it's only a couple of minutes long, right? But this is an example of one of those I was talking about at the start of the video. This is called Baroque and it's from Time Machine in 1993. 
It's just really eerie sounding. It, it certainly fits the title. It has a bit of a Baroque style classical sort of sound to it. But, you know, he uses, there's a bit of the, you know, he's using some reverb. So it makes it really eerie and haunting. And it's just a beautiful short sax track. Um, but on listening to it again, I just thought, oh, this is just, this sounds absolutely amazing. And it's, it's definitely, I think it deserves a spot in my top 10. It's not, you know, super fast and frenetic like some of his other works. It just demonstrates that he does slow as well as he does quick. <laughs> um, next up at number eight is a track called Cataclysmic off of Shockwave Supernova. Um, this kind of has, you know, it's it sort of at first seems repetitive, but the more you listen to it, the more you kind of like it because he adds in all these subtle variations to this track. Um, and it's kind of big sounding again, a bit like Souls of Distortion. Um, and definitely one of my favourites from that album, um, from Shockwave Supernova in, in 2015. Definitely one of my favourites from that album. It's a really good kind of crunchier uh, track with a bit of with a good groove, a great hook to it, you know. So at number seven, we have um, we have a track from The Elephants of Mars and it's Sailing the Seas of Ganymede. Um, and on listening to this album a few more times since my review, I've come to just keep liking this particular one more and more and more. Um, it's again, like what I was saying with Doors of Perception, it's really ambitious. And whilst it doesn't necessarily sound anything super complex, I think it kind of is. I think he's doing changes here in this track, which really sound really quite unique. And, and it's whilst it sounds very Satriani, it's also in the style of this album, which is unlike anything I think he's really done before and really plays um, to his, you know, to, to his strengths as well. Cataclysmic just has, yeah, just another track with more great progressions. I mean, what more can I say? It's a, it's a track with really good progressions in it. Number, sorry, did I say Cataclysmic? Number seven, say in the seas of Ganymede. So number six is uh, another slower track here called Love Thing from Crystal Planet from 1998's really awesome album, Crystal Planet. Um, and Love Thing is very romantic sounding, you know, it is perhaps one of the more, um, you know, it is, it is a bit of a lovey-dovey kind of song, I suppose you could call it. Um, with another sort of really kind of simple, gentle uh, rhythm um, that he overlays with just some fantastic melodic guitar solos that and he's he's you know there are so many different ones in this track that you've got to listen out for because they are stunning this is a stunning track from joe which is one of his more slower as i say is slightly more kind of you know romantic tracks but it's executed to absolute perfection and it's hard not to actually feel the emotion behind this track. I don't know what this is necessarily dedicated to. I don't know much about the song itself and maybe what Joe was thinking whilst he was writing this, but it really has a power behind it. When you listen to Love Thing, see, see if you can really feel it after listening to this track. It's really good stuff. At number five is a classic. It's the title track from Flying in a Blue Dream. And uh, funnily enough, I think I've actually had a dream where, not where I was flying in a blue dream as such, but where this song was playing. And it just the, was just like the most wonderful feeling in the world. And that's exactly the feeling that this song evokes. Um, again, it kind of repeats the similar sort of um, rhythm in the background or, you know, a similar riff uh, for a lot of it. But um, again, it's, it's, the, it's the way it enhances and develops the melody and builds and builds and builds in this track and, and I really like the ending of this one as well I think I mean it's just it's just beautiful it's just a beautiful sax track and number four we have another title track he does well with his title tracks does Joe Satriani and Crystal Planet from 1998's Crystal Planet and this is just um, you know what you might call a mic drop kind of a track it's just an absolute brilliant display i think of a lot of joe's different techniques uh, it's kind of got a, a sort of electronic vibe to it as well um in a way i suppose elephants of mars reminds me of crystal planet from time to time um but crystal planet the song it's the the title song is is just incredible and those harmonies at the end he's doing with the guitar tapping are out of this world i mean they're just wonderful um and I get goosebumps listening to Crystal Planet every single time. I can't can't name how many hundreds of times I've heard Crystal Planet, but it must be in the hundreds. And it's just 
uh, as I say, a mic drop kind of a track for me. Number three, Rubina's Blue Sky Happiness um, from The Extremist. And, you know, I don't generally like happy tracks that much in a way. And this is very happy. It's kind of got an acoustic and banjo combo, I think, or something like that going on. Um, but, uh, you know, there's really, again, you know, he, he packs in emotion. And as I say, he's often criticised for, you know, just being technical. And, you know, to somebody who says to me, Joe is just all about technicality, I'd throw on this track, Rubina's Blue Sky Happiness, and then say to me, after this track is finished, you know, tell me again, Joe is only about technicality. Listen to Rubina's Blue Sky Happiness. Incredible, slower track. That is just brilliant. Uh, number two, obviously Rubina as well, if you didn't know, is his, uh, his partner. At number two is Surfing with the Alien, the iconic Surfing with the Alien. I had to have this high up. This blew me away the first time I heard it. It absolutely blew me away. Um, and it was in the earlier days of me discovering Joe's stuff as well. So it stuck with me, a bit of nostalgia there as well. Um, but it is just incredible. I mean, ugh, the, the, you know, the, the technique. Uh, he was doing things that were at the time pretty outlandish, I think, for a lot of guitarists and, and you know, even his peers, I think, must have listened to this album and thought just, wow, Surfing with the Alien is an incredible title track. Which brings me on to my number one Joe Satriani track of all time. And I just needed to listen to this once more to affirm that this was definitely my favourite Satriani track of all time. And after hearing the the different riffs in this track, the, the way he, you know, chops and changes, and the, it's kind of like a breakdown in this track as well, which is just amazing. Um, and this is definitely one for you metalheads. So if, if you're a metalhead on my channel, because I do talk a lot about metal albums and stuff, then Motorcycle Driver is actually a track for you because it's pretty heavy, it's pretty hard rock, even maybe something more hard rock than metal, perhaps. You could, you know, get into a debate about that, but it doesn't matter really. Motorcycle Driver is a classic. It's a Satch classic. One of the tracks towards the end of The Extremist, uh, and I love The Extremist from front to back, but Motorcycle Driver is what a treat to have towards the end of this album. Um, as I say, it just has, every change is just perfection. The solos are perfection. Um, you know, the rhythm playing is perfection throughout the track. Um, it, it's just incredible. I mean, it, I've put it above Surfing with the Alien, which should tell you enough. And I actually think it's probably an underrated gem. So I thought I'd put it as my number one just to get the name out there a bit, or the, you know, the name of the song out there in case you don't know Motorcycle Driver, because it's just going to be, it's a really rewarding listen. And again, like a lot of Satch's music, it's kind of uplifting too. So anyway, those are my top 10 tracks and obviously the five honorable mentions as well. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do drop your top 10 or top 5 or favourite Joe Satriani song uh, or track in the comments. I look forward to reading those because I'm sure I've forgotten about some even though I've tried to cover as much of his catalogue as I, as I, as I could. Um, I'm sure there's other tracks as well. There are so many good ones um, in his discography really and you know finding those gems is the challenge really I guess. So, yep, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye for now.